Unreal Engine has two ways of rendering out your animation, and I'll show them both to you, because one is slightly, you know, intimidating, and the other one is easy, but limiting. So I thought maybe it's a good idea that we look into both. Also, just by total fluke, I've already learned something else since the last episode, which is only seconds ago. I can indeed, if I'm zoomed out here if i wanted to zoom into my whole timeline you can press the home button and that'll literally zoom you in a bit like on premiere it's the tab button or on photoshop it's control zero to see the whole thing so in unreal engine it's the home button that'll zoom into the whole in and out range so very very clever the first way to render something out is enabled by default and it's called the movie scene capture this is the button you want to press and if nothing else is available that dialog will pop up and it'll let you render things out so mainly animations but i suppose if you say a one frame duration you can also render out a still image like that so I'm saying by default, because there's also this little drop down icon next to it, which is essentially something that can show the movie render queue as well. So then you have two options to export things. But the movie render queue is still an optional plugin that is not enabled by default. So just to put this in here before we get going, that happens under edit plugins and then you can look for movie and there's the movie render queue i suppose actually there's something else if you just search for render you can actually is that better no no search for search for movie render and then you'll see it because uh, there's two this is the movie render queue plugin let's enable that there's also the movie render queue additional render passes plugin if you wanted to render out depth passes and stuff you can do that but um sadly this isn't gonna just be available you have to restart the editor for that to kick in so let me just quickly do that and then we'll go through both the options the old version and the new version when you restart everything needs to be saved so this could take a while Okay, we're back. I've got my animation queued up again in my sequencer. It just in case that doesn't come open by default. That is the master sequence that we've created in the previous video. So just double click that. That'll give you that sequencer window. And then you can go and play your animation. Just make sure you click this little camera icon here to preview what's in your timeline and now we're ready to render this out so now this little icon with the drop down that has two options here movie render queue which is the new plugin and the legacy movie scene capture let's use that one first so select this and then click the actual icon and that'll open this window it's not actually that scary it just says hey what is your image output format do you want that to be an avi i'm on windows here or do you want that to be an image sequence in png jpeg or other formats here so i might just leave it as an avi do you want to render out audio if you have audio i don't know if my scene actually has audio possibly has so i might just go and enable that here it's experimental though resolution you can set this to anything you like from the preset bits and pieces or pick a custom one i might render mine out in 1920 by 1080 and then you can use compression if you like since we're using an avi codec here it's fairly limited what you can do here but uh, you know it's it's something that gets you a usable video out of this that you could upload to youtube if you like i of course prefer to do some post-production on this i'd probably use an image sequence but you know this is going to work the output directory is a little bit tricky so it this thing suggests you could actually pick one but if you do that then anything that doesn't have complete write permissions might create an error message so let me try my desktop and see if that works i have a feeling it might not work uh, in which case we're going to go and uh, save it inside our project here that's essentially all we need to do. Click Capture Movie. And now it says, well, desktop is read only, so that can't work. Sorry, Jay. So I'm going to go back to wherever we were, which I think by default is in the project directory under Saved. And then we have something like a like movie output or something. I was going to go and create my own directory called Movies. There we go. Let me do that. And that is the folder we're using. Capture Movie and boom. Although rendering is actually a fairly fast process in Unreal Engine, the prep process to get there 
that can take some time. And it really depends on how complex the project is. So in my case, I'm expecting a few thousand shaders to be compiled before the first image can actually be rendered. Oh no, look at that. It, it happened fairly fast. This is a little preview window. So my real resolution is going to be much bigger. There's a little progress bar at the bottom here that just lets us go and open the captured folder with this little icon here. We can do that. This is where it's all coming together. Preview window's gone. Dang, Jay, dang, there it is. But you can see how quickly a full HD animation is now rendered. That is, that is quite cool. And this is the old legacy system. So I'll have a look at the new system, the movie render queue in a moment, because that is really intimidating and not intuitive at all. Yet it does work. So, you know, let's have a look at it. That is that. Look at that. 158 megabytes. Let me go double click it and see if it plays back. All right. Yes, there we go. It doesn't look so bad. I mean, I do see moving wires and stuff. I do see a ton of artifacts. So um, there's probably room for a little bit of improvement here. But it is a video that you can stick on YouTube or share with friends, family and total strangers put it on Discord and whatnot. There's some hiccups there, and those are things that happen as a result of the compression that Unreal Engine applies there. So it's not perfect, and I would recommend you don't use this. But for quick previews to get the timing right and stuff, I think it's, you know, it's, it's nice. It's built in, and, you know, it's really easy to get going. The second render queue, and this is going to be nicer if you render this out, not as an AVI, but if you choose a JPEG or PNG image sequence, it's going to be nicer if you just compile this in an editor. There's one thing I wanted to bring to your attention even in this dialogue, and that is at the very bottom of the dialogue. It says animation. If you open that up, there's some options that might be of interest. So sometimes if you have particle emitters going in your scene, then they take a while for the particles to be at the points where you want them to be. So like snow falling or something like fog or haze being created, that takes like two to five seconds to populate the scene. And if that is happening at the beginning of your scene, you might want to go and enable the warm up frame count here. So set that to something experimental, one second, five seconds, depends on how long you need. This also avoids things when the first few frames of your animation look a little bit mangled, as if they're coming through some kind of an interpolation because Unreal Engine sometimes cuts from a different location to the one that you're filming. So that's something you can adjust on the timeline, but just in case you don't have any success with that, you can use this warm up frame count here and set this to a few frames, like 50, 100 frames, or, you know, delay before warm up. Those are not, that's another thing to play around with. Let's have a look at the movie render queue. So this is an intimidating beast. You switch this over here. This is if you have the plugin enabled. And then you press this button and then a new tab opens up. And that's kind of cool. We see literally no options that we can deal with. And that's really, really unintuitive. So you could now go ahead and either add other shots to this queue that will all be rendered one by one. That's, this is what this queue is designed to do. Or you can go at the bottom right and use one of these two blue buttons here, render local, which is going to go and do pretty much what the previous version that we just saw did. So it'll use this version of Unreal Engine to render your sequence. Downside is that you won't be able to do anything else with this instance of Unreal Engine. So you're just going to have to sit there and wait for it to render out. It's okay if you're going for lunch, but if you want to keep working and if you want to set up the next shot or want to check other things, then you can use this option here, render remote. And remote doesn't actually mean a different computer, even though I'm sure it can be configured that way. It means it spawns up another Unreal Engine process in the background and goes and renders this thing. And the advantage is that this current instance of Unreal Engine will stay responsive and you can do things with it. So we're going to look at how to do that. If you literally just click it, then it'll start rendering with a few default values, but we can overwrite them with where it says unsaved config, quite interestingly. That's essentially where you have to go and adjust things with a seriously intimidating menu that at first glance makes zero sense to anybody. But, you know, I've looked at this last year and I think I can kind of get the gist of it. So um, quite bizarre. On output, you can set the output frame size if you want to use that. You can also set a different frame rate. So if I want to have this rendered in 60 frames a second, I can do that by enabling this box. 
I can choose to render a portion of my animation. By default, it renders the whole thing. But if you wanted to have a custom playback range and render everything from frame 51 to frame 200, for example, you can do that. So that'll override that. And because it's animation, sometimes you think, hey, my live project is going to have 60 frames, but I'm really only interested in an animatic. Then you can increase the frame step count. So if we were to say 60 frames and leave that at 1, it would render 60 frames per second. If I set that to 2, it would skip every other frame. If I set that to 4, it would now, in this configuration, render me an animatic with 15 frames a second. So that speeds up render times. It's nice for preview purposes. I'm going to leave it at 1, and that's basically that. So um, these other menus here, they're a little bit intimidating. JPEG is enabled. It doesn't have any settings. It means we're rendering our image sequence as JPEGs. But if you wanted to render something out in PNGs, you add the Settings button here and then go and pick something like PNG sequence. So now Unreal Engine will, well, first of all, with PNG, write the alpha channel, yes or no, depends on what you want. But it'll now write two images in its render path, namely a JPEG and a PNG. If you want to get rid of JPEGs, I don't know if there is a delete button. It doesn't seem to work for me. I can just go and disable it. So now it'll only render PNGs. That's kind of cool. So with this settings option here, you can add other bits and pieces to your render path. So that's kind of nice. If you wanted to render out audio in addition, you can do that. Some other bits and pieces here that I haven't quite fully explored, but that's basically how it works. Deferred rendering, I have no idea what it does, but that's what you can do here. Add other things that will also be added to your render pass. Then you can go and save yourself a preset. If you use this configuration quite a lot, we can go and save that as a preset or basically do nothing and these settings will be remembered. And now we can go and click one of our buttons here, render local or remote, and then you are rendering shall commence. Oh yes, one other thing, you can set the output directory here, but you actually you can't because when you click it, the browser opens with the location, but there's really nothing you can select. So it's basically this is the location, live with it. There's nothing we can change. Or let's just say it really isn't obvious to me. So all my images end up in here, the end, basically. But that's, you know, that's just what it's what what happens. Let me go and kick off the local render and then we're going to go and have a look at what the output is and then how I would compile this in Adobe Premiere Pro to turn it into a video. This is what I meant earlier, compiling shader. So it's not actually currently rendering. It is compiling everything so that the render is going to look hopefully better than what we saw with the previous movie capture option. So that'd be kind of interesting to pitch them side by side and see, you know, which one looks better. And depending on how complex your assets are, this can indeed take a while. Here we go. After eight minutes of compiling shaders, the actual render time isn't that bad at all. But when getting there is a bit of a problem. Okay, let me go into the output directory here. I'm going to go and copy the path and I'll go into Premiere Pro and import all these frames as an image sequence. And then I'm going to go and compile them into a project. So import, go and paste that path right into here. Select the first frame and just enable image sequence here. And then Premiere knows this is a whole sequence that I can now go and either view or turn into a sequence that I can manage inside my project. And this is what it looks like. I went ahead and rendered both of these things out in 4K, and these are them side by side. This is with the legacy movie scene capture version. And you can see that despite me having rendered this out as a 4K image sequence and compiled this, you can still see some inconsistencies here. Whereas with the newer, slightly more complex movie render queue, it does actually look butter smooth. And let's watch this side by side comparison in a moment one more time, because there are other things that I've noticed and I didn't really know it was going to be that big a difference. So on one hand, we see these slight inconsistencies when it comes to the frame rate. So it looks like the image is kind of halfway rendered and then halfway not or whatever. But the more aggressive thing that I can see here is that in the legacy movie scene capture, you can see that the assets seem to be popping in to place as the camera moves. And I'm not entirely sure why that 
that is happening, but that is certainly not something I see in the movie render queue. Just wanted to let you know that. So I did render this out in 4K, this video here on YouTube as well, but there is a link in the description to a downloadable version of this video so you can take a look at it yourself without the YouTube compression. And you see that all these things that are popping into place, that is just more annoying. And this is something there, especially in the background, the grass and all these plants. So this is something that I have noticed on previous occasion as well. And the thing is, I suppose because of the pre-shader compilation in the movie render queue, this doesn't happen. And I think that alone for me is just worth putting up with the fact that it's slightly more difficult and cumbersome to set up. Yeah, but look at that. This is butter smooth and they're both rendered in 4K and they're both rendered as PNG image sequences. So that was it. I hope it was helpful. I hope you got something out of it. If you have any more information about rendering animations in Unreal Engine, then please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I will see you next time. Take care.